I've been trying to this uh, reading the top and bottom lines of uh, arts education through social enterprise, and I, I refer to kind of bottom lines because too often, too often or not in businesses we talk about the bottom lines, but I think it's important to talk about the top lines as well as actually what's important in new business, not just the kind of finances. Uh, very briefly, our history was we started as what was called a mini uh, education action zone in the Wirral, uh, funded between 2002-2004 on a kind of short-term fixed uh, project funding. Uh, basis from central government through local governments and was focused very much about working with 12 schools, one secondary school and then the primaries, uh, looking at those good old formative qualities of attitudes to learning, attendance in schools and attainment and all those things about trying to get kids to comply and behave and do what they're told uh, in a nice kind of way. And the typical day for us in the AZ was driven by what was called the action plan. The action plan had targets, it had job descriptions. Those job descriptions had person specifications and they had terms and conditions. And you can still see this kind of structure and this kind of top-down approach. It was the first time I'd ever heard about what's called Poets Day, which piss off early tomorrow Saturday. Uh, at the end of that period of time, we kind of transmuted the EAZ into what we call the Aspire Trust with the help of good old Merseyside uh, Enterprise Initiative and MSIF. And that changed our culture really from being a kind of top-down thing into what was called a social enterprise. That meant we are a charity, it means we're non-profit distributing, it doesn't mean we don't make profits, we don't distribute the share owners, and it's company limited by guarantee, but critically, it's owned by the communities of interest who, for whom we work. So it's very much kind of from the bottom, uh, from the grounds upwards, really, which is a very different thing from EAZ. And the very the kind of typical day in the life of the of the social enterprise was we run by a business plan, but that is an emergent plan, it's provisional, it's evolutionary, it's not fixed, and it's, we can shape the culture of organisation in that way. So our top line, if you like, have to do with research and evaluation. We work with a number of clients and customers, both nationally and uh, uh, across uh, um, the region as well, uh, with local organisations such, such as Centre of Sound, through our kind of learning and CPD work particularly. And we also have a range of kind of production and event management work that we go uh, we're working again with international organisations, local organisations, and, re uh, and uh, regional as well. So you can see that pattern <coughs> between the kind of re from the research through the learning through to kind of event management as well. Uh, which is kind of an interesting kind of way of working in, in as much as it's kind of come from the ground upwards and it's come from responding to those communities rather than the kind of action plan to be determined by ministers somewhere down in London or elsewhere. So the kind of bottom lines for us are about we've uh, generated a lot of income from kind of export work in particular. Um, we've provided lots of opportunities, over 200 for kind of educators and artists over the last couple of years, and developed a number of kind of new work networks and uh, partnerships and all those kind of things as well. But critically what it's allowed us to do is rethink what work is in, this, in these days. It's allowed us to rethink what the culture of organisation is, what the work-life balance of organisation is, and rethinking what a job actually is as well. So there's the advantage of that in startup time of actually rethinking all the basics of what it means to work. And one of the first questions we asked ourselves was, who's paying today? If you work in the public sector, you'll know, you'll have something back that says, we know who's paying today, but when you start up your own business in this world, the first question is, who's paying it? How does today get badged? What is my identity? And one of the kind of big things that comes out of that, because it's taking a lot of your time and energy, you start rethinking really about what work is, you really start rethinking really about your identity and when work stops and when play starts, and more often not work and play actually become one of the same thing. You start rethinking really jobs, so we might move from 35 hours a week to 46 weeks a year. Is it that homogenous, or is it constituted of lots of different tasks to be equal shapes and sizes? And actually, you start asking yourself how much of these jobs have I been doing are actually mindless, bodily, bodily less events or admins, if you like. And what that helped us to do in the early days is actually rethink what it means to have a job description. And rather than being a series of terms and roles and functions and stuff like that, we started looking at jobs as being, being more in a kind of ge a geological sense with layers, subject to functions and pressures over a period of time. And what that's led us to now is that we have a kind of stru a structure of course staff, but working critically with associates, who I'll talk about in a minute briefly, and obviously working with a number of different freelancers as well. But the point about associates, which I think is of interest tonight particularly, is that that's not just about employing freelancers, but it's working with people to find out what they're interested in as well, and seeing how we can support their interests as much as they can support our interests as well. Um, and that's about bringing projects back to us, as well as us uh, taking the project out to people. Well, those should be some little arrows in that screen, they're not there. But the final question, point here is to say, are any of you out there fancy being an associate? Do any of you fancy working in arts education? Do you have a kind of particular angle on arts education as it should be, rather than it is, rather than it is from a top-down approach? 
Because you are, they come to see us, that's our uh, contact details, and that's my presentation. Viva Las Vegas. Thank you.